Hello. So in this video, we're going to look at the use of trigonometry to solve um, more advanced problems, kind of like pre-calculus kind of type problems. So one of the things I love about this problem is it's very practical and it shows students why we really do look into trig. So I hope you enjoy this. All right. So let's take a look at the problem itself. All right. An island is four miles offshore in a large bay. A water pipeline is to be run from a water tank on the shore to the island as indicated in the figure. And I'll show you that in just a moment. The pipeline costs 40,000 per mile in the ocean and 20,000 per mile on land. So obviously it's cheaper to lay pipeline on the land than it is to do that in the ocean. Let me show you the picture. All right, so I kind of highlighted certain things, but here's your water tank, here's your island, and basically you're four miles from the island when you look at directly the shortest distance here. And there's an angle here, here's where now you could basically run some pipeline on land and then cut in here or here, right, or come in closer and then go in. So that's why there's an angle here. It's like, where are you cutting in? Now the distance from this point, which is the shortest dis distance from the island right here, directly uh, under the, f basically four miles. The distance from here to the water tank is 10 miles. So what you have here, this distance here is gonna be 10 miles minus whatever this, this piece is. So we'll find that out soon. But anyway, there's your picture. Here's your questions. First off, do you think that the total cost is independent of the angle theta chosen? Or does it depend on theta? And explain, like if you say yes, explain why. If you say no, explain why. So what I would say is just pause the video for a moment and go ahead and answer. So here's what my answer would be. It would be no, it's not independent. It does matter what theta is. And why is that? All right, so let me get a pen here. Now. Obviously, if you were to go as much as possible on land and then straight up in the ocean, well, we know that two legs of the right triangle is much longer than just this leg, for example, one leg. So that would be the longest amount of pipe you could run, and that's obviously not going to be your cheapest option. But then again, if you put all the pipe, like if you just start here, for example, and go straight, actually, I'm sorry, not here. If you started right at the island and went boop, not the island, I'm sorry, the water tank, and went straight to the island, that's all pipe in the ocean, which is the most expensive pipe. So you're like, well, I don't think that's the cheapest either. So the reason it depends on theta is because there's a sweet spot between these two very expensive options where you're doing a little bit on land and some on ocean, and you're trying to find what's the cheapest amount of total cost will I have? And that does depend on theta. So that's what this problem is about. And that's obviously extremely realistic. So we've answered part A. Now let's look at part B. Express the total cost C of the pipeline in terms of theta. Now, when they say that, what they mean is you find an equation where on one side you just have C, nothing else, one C. And then on the other side you have blah, 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 stuff, 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 theta, theta. <laughs> that's all you have. That's what they mean by express one variable in terms of another. So the one variable you're solving for is isolated with nothing affecting it, and then it's equal to a bunch of stuff with the other variable, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. All right, now what I'd like you to do is take a moment and just, again, pause the video and think, how would you write the total cost of this in words? Don't even try the math yet. Don't even try to like find the formula and this and that. Just in words, like how would you explain to somebody something like how to find the total cost? And I'll give you a hint. They give you the rate dollars per mile, dollars per mile for the miles. So think about how would I do that? How would I use dollars per mile and the miles to come up with the total cost? So pause the video, really do. This is what you need to do is force yourself to get through this and think in words and be very clear and be able to express how you would calculate this before you even go into all the math, okay? All right, so hopefully what you've done is you said, look, 
the total cost is going to be the cost of the pipe on land plus the cost of the pipe in water. Now, how do I find each cost? Well, you would have, they gave me the cost of the pipe on land is the rate of $20,000 per each mile on land. So then if I know how many miles there are on land, when I multiply the two, right, what will happen? These units will cancel out, right? Miles on land will cancel out. Miles on land will cancel out. And I'll just be left with dollars. Same thing over here. I am given the rate $40,000 per each one mile in the ocean. If I can figure out how many miles there are in the ocean, once I multiply these two, this cancels out. And I basically end up having dollars. So I'm going to add dollars plus dollars to get the total dollars. Okay, that's that's what I'm talking about is, you know, you might want to use your units. It really helps, right? So now we have to go about the business of finding out. Well, okay, how do I find the number of miles on land? All right, so that's what we're going to work on next. Now, here's what I want to do. Give myself some space here and work underneath here. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do is hopefully I can fit all this in here. But what I want to do here is use this right triangle and I'm going to go ahead and label this is the number of miles in ocean. I'm going to label that H and I'll put in here miles in ocean. And I'm going to call this part here, let me get, use a different color. I'm going to call that part D, and I'm going to say that D is, D is miles on land, or, I'm sorry, that's not true. D is just part of this. Nope. I'm just going to uh, say that's, sorry about that. D, I'm just going to label that D, but when we need to find out the miles that we're going to be on land, it's what, 10 miles minus D. My apologies there. So we just had to label D so we could work with it. All right. So now let's go about the business of finding this. So I want to find out here, for example, well, what are the miles on land? So let's do that first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the, I'm going to say miles on land equals 10 miles, the total distance from the here to the, just the point under the island, minus D, and now I need to solve for D, because once I solve for D, then I actually have the miles on land. Okay. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna draw a right triangle again, right here. Here's theta. They give me four here, and I want D. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna solve for D, I really can at this point. Relative to this angle, this is opposite. And 4, which is what I'm given, is adjacent, right? So what I want is opposite. And what I have is adjacent. So pause for a moment and think, well, okay, if I have, if this, these are the two sides I'm working with, which trigonometric ratio am I going to work with? Well, hopefully you'll say tangent, right? Tangent of this angle theta is opposite over adjacent, right? D over 4. Okay. Now we're almost there. We're on the business of solving for D. So all I would do is multiply both sides by 4, and I'll get 4 tangent theta equals D. Right? So I'm done with that part. Let me just kind of do this so we're separating... And what we're finding is miles on land. Okay. So now let's go back to here. Our original equation, right? We needed to find C is equal to. Now what happens is most people don't write all these units out. I wrote them out for you for clarity so you know why we're doing what we're doing. They would just write 20,000. And then they would multiply it by the number of miles on land, right? Which we found out was... 4 tangent theta. I'm, I'm sorry, 10 minus 4 tangent, tangent theta. So the miles, let me write that. Miles on land 
is 10 minus D, which is 10 minus 4 tangent theta. Okay? So this is why you have to write a lot. You saw me making a few you know, mistakes here. I went, oh, that's right, 10 minus D. Found D. Got to plug it back in. So really write everything out. It's just so easy to make a mistake if you don't. So now I'm going to put, instead of saying number of miles on land, now I can finally say, oh, but that's 10 minus 4 tangent Okay, so we got this first half. Now we got to go plus, and here we're going to have 40,000. And then we're going to find out the number of miles in the ocean. All right, so I would say miles in the ocean. And by my picture, that's what? H. So pause the video and see if based on what we did in the first half, you can find H, okay? So hopefully you've paused this and let me go ahead and start what I would do. I would draw again a new, by the way, I'm the right angle there. So here's four, here's H, right? And again, H is the hypotenuse and four is the adjacent, right? So I have what I want is the hypotenuse. What I have is the adjacent. So which trigonometric ratio would I use if I'm basically doing working with those two sides? Well, most likely I work with cosine, right? You could work with secant, but it's just easier to work with sine, tangent, cosine in the beginning, right? So let's go ahead and say then we know that the cosine of the angle, right? is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse or 4 over h. Now, I need to solve for h. Let me write that. Right. That was a little bit more obvious. We didn't have to do what we did before, like plug in d. Well, now h is in the denominator, so I'm going to multiply both sides by h. So I'm going to have h cosine theta equals 4, and now I want to solve for h, so I'm going to divide by cosine, both sides by cosine theta, so I'm going to get h equals 4 divided by cosine theta, which honestly is fine. I mean, if you were in my class, I'd be, this is totally good. But I think the book does this. 4, it's understood, times 1 over cosine theta, right, which is 4 secant theta, because 1 over cosine theta is secant theta. Okay. So now we found H, and we can use that to substitute now. All right. It's the miles in the ocean, and we can plug it in here. And we said, okay, it's 40,000 times the number of miles in ocean, but we figured that out. That's 4 secant theta. Okay. So this is really quite good. We're doing really well here. We've got almost everything we need. Hopefully that made sense. Let me go ahead and take this out now. And now all we need to do is take a look at our original problem. We've actually answered part B. The only thing you might want to do, the book I think um, simplifies this, like you might want to distribute and things like that, but that's up to you. You could actually work with it like this or not. All right. so let's see. I will, I will go ahead and simplify this, probably not quite like the book does, but I'll have here 20, uh, 200,000, because I multiply 20,000 times 10, minus, and I'll do 20,000 times 8, 80,000 tangent theta, plus, and then 40,000 times 4, 160,000. And I'm going to go divided by cosine theta. Okay, I'm just going to do that. I think your book keeps it secret theta, but I'm going to work with this. Now, what I'm going to do next is look at part C. And again, if you want to, we'll read the problem and then you can pause the video and see if you can do this. For what value of theta is the total cost the minimum? So because this is not linear, you'd have to do this in your calculator or no calculus. But enter your equation. We found the equation from part B in my, your graphing calculator and then use, the ta use a table. I think I started at 15 degrees and maybe went to, 
I don't know, I went by fives, increments of fives. And then take a look, see what is the minimum cost and which angle produces that minimum cost. Okay, so pause the video. Go ahead and put that in your calculator. See what you get. All right, so what I'm going to do is show you what I put in here. I went ahead and put in that equation, okay? Let's see if I can. So 20,000 minus 80,000 tangent theta minus, I'm sorry, plus 160,000 divided by cosine x. I put it in exactly as you see it, okay? Then what I did, and by the way, the x is this button right there. And x is just an angle. It's the input to a trig function. Now what I'm going to do is look at table set. So I'm gonna, since it's above window, I'm going to do second, table set. Again, I started the table at 15 degrees, and I'm incrementing by 5 degrees, and I just let everything on auto. And now I'm actually going to go to table right here. So I'm going to do second, graph. Now there's your table. So x is your angles incremented in fives. Here, y is your cost. So you can see you're at 34,000. I'm sorry, 344,208. Now it goes down to 341,000. So your cost is going down. And it's going to now 339,000. That's going down. 338,000. That's going down. Now it's going to 339,000. That's going up. So it looks like 30 degrees is your lowest, uh, is the angle which produces the lowest cost of 33,000. I'm sorry, uh, $338,564. And then if you wanted to, you could increment by degrees and see if you get even more lower costs. But this is the basic principle what you're doing here, right? So this was the problem we worked on. And honestly, I think if you break it down and really look at it, it wasn't too bad. Now, the way you're going to learn how to do these is by doing them by yourself. So what I suggest is go ahead and do this problem again, you know, without any help and see if you can replicate that. All right. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this. I think it's a wonderful problem and extremely practical. Thanks so much for listening.